When I retired in 2018, I did all of the math, I crunched all of the numbers, and it was clear that we could afford to retire. And yet I was nervous, scared. It was, it was a very difficult transition to go from saving money for decades to all of a sudden having no working income and spending down the money that we'd saved. It was as if this nest egg was the only thing standing between us and the street. And frankly, it was a very difficult transition for me. And to overcome it, I did a number of things and I actually wanna share those with you today. I'm gonna to walk through seven ways you can overcome or at least address, I guess, your fear of retirement. I will say this, this is a, maybe a, a bonus way to overcome your fear and it's this. It's perfectly normal to be a bit apprehensive to go from working to retiring, at least for some folks, it was for me. And if it's uh, that way for you, I think uh, hopefully these seven things I'm gonna walk through can help you. Now, uh, as we walk through it, it actually, this video is kind of uh, timely because our sponsor uh, of this channel this month is New Retirement. It's a retirement planning tool. It's a tool that I've used for years. It's one of my favorites. It's sort of my go-to to retirement planning tool. And we'll actually be looking at it in today's video as it can help us with a couple of things we're gonna walk through. So let's get started. Seven things to overcome the fear of retirement. The first one is to budget, budget, budget. Uh, I've never been a sort of budgeter in the sense of budgeting down to every nickel and having a, a, an amount for every category. And if I've got $400 for food, I'm not gonna go over that budget by any amount. That's never been the way that, that I've budgeted, but we have always tracked our spending and when it comes to retirement, it's really important to do that because the budget not only helps you, you know, figure out how, how you're gonna spend your money month to month, but it can also help you and is in critical in understanding whether you can actually afford to retire. We need to know how much we're, good, we're spending each month. And, and not only right now, we need to think long-term, is that spending going to change? And of course, that requires some estimates uh, when we think about, say, a 30-year retirement, but it's really, really important and the very first thing we need to do. Now, you may already keep a budget. You may have your favorite budgeting tool. I happen to use Tiller, uh, which is a spreadsheet-based budgeting tool, and I'll leave links to everything below this video. Uh, but whatever budgeting tool you use, you may already have a good handle on your finances. The thing I would say is it's important to think about this budget not only in uh, the perspective of how we're spending our money month to month, but how it affects our retirement plan. And let me show you this. This is, as I mentioned, new retirement. And one of the things it does in the expense section here, and this is a demo, uh, ver a demo account, but it allows you, to, of course, to input into new retirement how much you spend. Now, in this version of it, I just have sort of a lump sum. I just threw in $7,000. But one of the things new retirement allows you to do is use this planner plus a budgeter. And when you do that, you'll see that you can then dive into the details of how you spend your money. Now, you don't have to do this. Because we've tracked our, our money for a long time, I know how much we spend. And so I just put in, as you saw in this demo account, it's the same way I do it in my personal account. I just put a sort of a lump sum amount. But the thing that this planner allows you to do is to drill down and you can see you've got over here the, the higher level categories. And if you add an expense, we'll put this as a home, this is a home related expense. You see that it gives you a lot of subcategories. And the thing I like about this, even if you choose just to put in your spending as a lump sum, whether it's in new retirement or some other retirement planning tool, you can actually go through and make sure if, if I missed anything. So this is just subcategories for home related expenses. If we were to go over here to utilities, we'd see a different set of subcategories and we can walk through all of these and make sure we're not missing anything. The key is whether you end up using new retirement or something else, the key is we need to know how much we're spending each month and, and year by year so that we can use that information to figure out, frankly, can we afford to retire and how close are we? Is it is it a close call? Maybe we can afford to retire, maybe not, or are we comfortable there? And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. So that's the first thing. You gotta have your budget. You gotta know how much you're gonna be spending in retirement. And it will change from what you're spending during your working years. Of course, every situation is different. And for you, it may change a lot uh, or maybe not, not, not a lot, but that's something you gotta figure out. And that's step one. Step two is I like to take that budget 
and think about it as uh, how much of it is needs. You know, we got to have it. We can't really survive, you know, without food or shelter. How much of it is wants, like maybe some travel, eating out, and those sorts of things. And then I actually have a third category. I just call it desires. That might be sort of big ticket items. Maybe you want to you want to buy a boat or you want to travel around the world or uh, one year or you know you want to remodel the kitchen uh, i think it's important to to recognize that not every dollar in our budget is the same some of them we absolutely have to spend uh just to survive and uh it's good to know that number we don't we, we don't we hope we don't get to that point where we only have money for needs but i think it's important to have at least a rough idea of what that number is and then how much more to get those those nice things that we may want not getting crazy uh but but something you know beyond just the the, the bare necessities how much would that be and then if we really kind of want to live large whatever that means for you what does that look like and so i think step two is you know we don't just leave the budget alone we kind of put it into these categories again it doesn't have to be down to the penny a lot of this is sort of estimates and in fact you could have some expenses that span a couple of those right so for example our house well you need shelter and so that's certainly a need but we live in a bigger house than we need and we're paying as a result more real estate taxes than we need uh once every six months uh, we're paying more in utility bills so you know some of the budget items could actually cover span a couple of those buckets needs wants and desires uh, you have to figure that out again it doesn't have to be down to the penny but i think we want some idea now why do i do that well that gets us to step three and this is a really important one. I like to take those numbers, look at our investments, our balances, understand Social Security, maybe you have other sources of income, pensions and, and annuities, but I want to evaluate those expenses. And I just use the 4% rule, uh, a very common way to determine how much you can spend in retirement. The idea is you can spend 4% of your nest egg in year one, whatever that might be, and then adjust it for inflation thereafter. I'm not one that actually uses the 4% rule to actually determine how much I can spend every year. And we've got a number of videos on this channel about different ways to figure out how much you can spend each year. But I do think the 4% rule is, uh, I think, a good rule of thumb for planning. And so I, what I want to do is say, okay, uh, here are my needs, here are my wants, here are my desires. I know how much sort of guaranteed income I've got coming in. So how much more am I going to need to take from my, my uh, investments? And here's the thing. The hope is that whatever amount you need to take from your investments for needs, I like to have that well below 4%. Uh, I, I, to me, ideal would be 2%. And again, this is just for needs. Uh, but certainly, I wouldn't want above, that above 3%. If you're looking at how much you need to take out of your investments just to survive, and that number uh, is 4% or more of your investments, even after factoring in Social Security and other guaranteed forms of income, well, maybe the fear you have of retirement is frankly justified. To me, that would be a very uh, nerve-wracking way to retire, particularly, again, if you've, you know, you're know you retiring at, say, 65 or even earlier, and you're planning for a, a retirement of 30 years or, or more. But on the other hand, if you do the, you crunch the numbers and say, you know what, I, I can just spend two and a half percent of my investments and cover my needs. Maybe it goes up to three and a half if I add in my wants, and then maybe there's some desires that, that, that put it above that. You know, that might be a comfortable place for you. But I think knowing those numbers, at least for me, really helped me deal with the, the apprehension I had of retiring. Now, the fourth thing I want to walk through, it's related to the first three, but it's, it's, it's different. And that is, you may be planning for one-time purchases in retirement. I've kind of alluded to them. Maybe you want to take a trip around the world in five years, or you're planning for uh, a wedding that you're going to uh, pay for. Maybe you want to remodel the kitchen or buy the boat or buy the sports car, or buy the second home, or I don't know, whatever crazy desires you have in retirement. Here's the thing. Planning for those one-time purchases in terms of you know, where you have enough in retirement can be difficult. It doesn't really fit into the 4% rule uh, because it's not a part of your every year expense. It's not part of your regular budget. It's money that you're frankly going to sort of take out of, your, I guess, your, your, your um, investments and set it aside for something you're going to spend in the future. Now, what you can do is simply take that, you know, you don't have to actually literally move it, but I mean, just in your analysis, you could, you could subtract that amount, whatever it is, from your investments and then run the 4% rule calculations. That's one way to sort of get 
a you know sort of a high level you know rule of thumb kind of uh, idea of whether you have enough to retire. We can go back to a tool like new retirement and other re pl retirement planning tools do the same thing. But if we come back here to expenses, you'll see that it has a one-time expense section right here. And you can put in here and walk through the screens and put in here, you know, trip around the world. We'll just call it travel, you know, and you're going to, you're going to spend, I don't know what a trip around the world costs. Probably I'll put in $10,000. Uh, you can pick which account you're going to pull it from and then when you're going to do this. And this software will calculate that, add it into your plan, and then rerun the numbers in the way this particular tool works. It gives you an overall chance of success. Obviously, a lot of details go into new retirement. But the point is, uh, you will want to consider one-time purchases because it can absolutely affect uh, you know, your retirement readiness. But beyond that, it's part of just having some level of confidence, you know, that you've got a good plan in place and that, you know, as best as we can figure out, we can't predict the future, but as best as we know today, the plan will work. All right. Number five, um, this is gets into a bit of stoic philosophy. Uh, one of the views of stoicism is, you know, let's assume the worst. You're going to, you, you plan to do something. What's the worst thing that could happen? How, how could this go really wrong? And then live with that for a, for a minute or two. Okay, what would you do? I call it the doomsday scenario in retirement. So what would happen if the markets just really crashed worse than we've experienced before and inflation was higher than we ever imagined? Uh, you know, what would that look like? And in our case, I start to think about things like, well, we have two cars. I'd sell one of them. Maybe I'd sell both of them. I don't know. Um, we would downsize. We have, you know, equity in our home. We're not factoring that into our retirement spending. It's not cash that we have to spend. It's just, you know, illiquid equity in our home. But we could downsize. We could move to a, a lower cost uh, of living area. So we do have options in the worst case scenario. I could go back to work. My wife could go back to work. Again, these aren't things that we want to do. These aren't things that we're planning to do in retirement. But I think if we just sit for a moment with sort of the worst case scenario, the doomsday scenario, as I like to call it, and think about what our options would be, I actually find it gives me some level of comfort. Again, we don't want to do those things, but if we had to, we could and we could survive. In fact, you could even model all of those types of things in a tool like New Retirement. New Retirement can factor in your plan to say move. Maybe you're going to downsize and move to a state with no income tax. Well, New Retirement, as well as other planning uh, software, can actually model that for you in a scenario that you can set up. So you can actually plan for the worst in a tool like New Retirement. I actually find it comforting to, to do that. If maybe that's just, maybe I'm just a little, a little weird in that sense, but I do actually think it can give you some level of comfort. Now, the sixth thing, and I've sort of talked a bit about new retirement, but the sixth thing, and this is what I did, I started using new retirement years ago. I do think a retirement planning tool is important. As I've mentioned, the one I use the most is new retirement. If you've been a longtime listener of this channel, you know I've looked at a ton of them. Empower, formerly Personal Capital, has a free one that I think is, is, is good. It certainly doesn't go into the level of detail that new retirement does. I've talked about Projection Lab in the past. It's a good option. Um, I'll leave links to, to several of these below the video. Uh, a lot of it comes down to personal choice. I know some of you use complicated spreadsheets, uh, like Prelana is, is one that I know a lot of folks use. So again, there are a lot of options that fit just about every sort of personality. And um, as I said, I, um, my go-to is new retirement, but yours might be different. But I think the important thing is, is to pick a retirement planning tool and use it. These, these tools are not very expensive, even the paid ones are usually the, you know, they cost about the, the amount of a couple of cups of coffee a month. So th this is not a lot of money, but using the retirement planning tools, spending some time to understand them, put your information in, update them once a quarter, twice a year, even just once a year, I think can be very helpful. And it, it certainly gave me a lot of comfort uh, in, in this whole transition into retirement. So I'd suggest that you use something, whatever you find best for you. The seventh and final tip I'll give you, this is also something that I did, was I got a second opinion. So I manage our own investments. I don't pay someone to manage our investments, but I went out and I found a financial advisor for, the, for a, a small fee, would look at our scenario uh, and crunch the numbers in their own software that financial advisors use 
and say, yeah, Rob, you're going to be okay. That That's actually very comforting. I used Mark Zorl of um, um, uh, Planning Vision, if I've got that right. I'll leave a link below the video. Um, he's very inexpensive. Uh, I will leave a link to a number of fee-based and flat fee financial planners that you can consider. Uh, but, but whoever you use, I think it's important to get a second opinion. And again, it's just a way to get a little extra comfort as you transition from work to retirement. Now, I, I wouldn't uh, suggest that you, you hire an expensive uh, planner that wants to manage your investments for 1% a year or more. I just think that actually takes us in the opposite direction. When we do that, it actually makes our, uh, it, 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 it sets us back in terms of our retirement readiness because that 1% fee uh, really takes a big chunk out of our wealth over 10, 20, 30 years. But there are plenty of financial advisors that will manage your investments for far less. Again, you'll see at least some options in the link that I'll, I'll put below this video. However you decide to do that, whether you manage your own investments or not, I think it's important to get that second opinion. And uh, it worked for me. It was very helpful in sort of understanding some of the issues in our own retirement plan. And uh, so I think it can go a long way in helping you make sure you're ready for retirement. If you're not, maybe to deal with those issues, but then if you are, just to get a little more comfort uh, that, you know, yeah, you've got this. So there you go. Those are seven things. I did each and every one of these things uh, about five years ago, and I found them helpful. I hope you find them helpful as well. If you have any questions, leave them uh, in the comments below. I'll be help you, happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.